which is a new project that I'm working on and I'll show you a bit of the capabilities it already has. So you see here the basic ed world editor. First I'm going to load a world that I created before. It's a very small test world. So you see there's a bridge there, a few plants. You can move around in this world and uh, you can interact with the environment. So let's say I take this. So it's uh, using Crystal Space and the Bullet uh, Physics Library. Okay, here you see the nice reflection and there you see all the water. I'm going to disable gravity now so you can so I can easily move up and uh, then I can change the camera position. Here you see a, a table with a few objects. You can manipulate all the objects. Mm. Some objects are static. You see here that I enabled the static keyword. That, that means that you can't simply move them. Of course you can move them in the editor using the right keys. But you, can, you can't move them with the mouse. If you disable static the object becomes physical but then you see that you can interact with the object in a more natural manner. So I'm going to put static on again. Static is useful because it stabilizes the physics simulation a bit so it's easier to get stable objects. I can now take further, for example, I'm going to add a new beef stack, a new stack to this table. So, and a milk can here. Voila. And you can also add other objects, like for example, furniture, let's say a wooden box on the ground. So, and another table. There it is. There are various things that you can do. Some these objects all start uh, dynamic, that means that they move by default, but you can also uh, make them static if you want. But there are a few objects that start static uh, as well. So let's say I'm going to add some, some rocks here, some rubble. Oh, that's a small one, let's pick a bigger one. That one is static by default. You see it's also embedded in the wall, but that's maybe not a problem. Sometimes you want uh, to embed it. You can move it around a bit, so it becomes more natural. And you can also move it down. Down, I said. That's an example. You see here a sky sh uh, shader in action. It's uh, not bug free yet, for example here you can see a visible seam, so that's a bit of a problem that needs to be fixed. But it also supports day and night cycles, for example, let's enable this. So now it's night, and if we wait long enough it will become day, so let's wait a bit. In the meantime I'm going to put some other objects or an NPC, for example. For, for, ah, now it becomes day and you can see the sun actually moving. If you look closely here you see the sun moving. Now I'm going to stop the automatic simulation so it stays at the current time. Let's put Frankie here. You see, it's static by default. Uh, in the purpose of this will, in the end, be to make a, a game. And, and uh, at this moment, you can only place objects and so on, so you cannot really do much. But the idea is that you will be able to add entity information, so that you can say, uh, for example, this and this NPC has to walk around a certain path, or this NPC will react that way towards the player, or, or this way. So you can do various things then, but that's all not implemented yet. At this moment, you only have this world editor. F some of the more powerful uh, tools are, for example, if you have multiple objects, I'm going to 
put a few barrels here so one here you can easily put them on top of each other like this this that's, uh, that's not very hard you can also let's put put another thing here say you have a box and make that static and another box which I'll also make static you see it's uh, it follows the terrain but let's say I want to have it straight um, that's this button and this one also so now they are uh, aligned to the world axis I can you can multiple select them and for example you can put them at the same height or you can put them next to each other it automatically calculates the best direction to put them in so you can easily move make a series of objects that way you can also stack them but then you have still it only adjusts the height so you still have to move it on top of the other box so you so that way you can easily make uh, for example these house blocks so let's say I want to put another house block next to it to make the house a bit bigger so we have a building house block let's put it oh yeah actually yeah I put it too close to the wall so it put it there let's align them same rotation and position and same height so you see how it puts them at the same next exactly next to the other uh, house block that's an easy way to manipulate objects one other thing you can also do but that's not really uh, completely finished yet so there are still a few, few bugs here and there so you can make streets these are all street blocks that you can use to make uh, uh, blocks after each other but there is an easier way once it works fine it's a curved street so I make one here okay so this one didn't work sometimes you have to do it a few times before it gets right this is better but it's sing it's a bit in the ground that's no problem we will raise it and we will also move up a bit and look on top of the selected object so you can see it better and we will still raise the street a bit so you so it comes out of the, the world out, out of the the ground so now you will go up. Oh, I have to disable gravity, of course. So, so you see here the street from above, and you can switch to another mode where you can manipulate the the, the nodes of the street, and you can also create extra nodes. So that way you can make a curved street, a bended street. With the flat button, it tries to put the street above the terrain, but this doesn't always work perfectly. So let's go to normal mode and first raise the street a, a bit so you can see it better. And then we move on top of it again and go higher. Okay, back to curved mode. Create another point and we so. And there we go this way. So, so you see here how you could in with a bit of work you can make nice looking streets. Let's enable gravity again so we go down and then we can look at the street somewhere. Of course it's not exactly at the right position so we lower it, lower it again. Getting it to fit with irregular ter uh, terrain is of course a bit hard, so that's something that still needs to be worked on. Uh, okay. Basically this is it, this is the editor as we have it now. You can already do a lot of things, but it's still uh, rather primitive. And uh, what needs to be added is everything that has to be done with regards to entity management like quests and so on. My idea is to be able to make a full game using only this tool. All objects that you can use are pre-selected in a configuration file and then you can make those objects using Blender for example or any other uh, editor and then uh, you put you can put a world together with this and make a, a game. 
This is of course compare this to crystal space and crystal entity layer. Crystal space is very generic, it's a 3D engine. Crystal entity layer sits on top of that, adds more game capabilities. And this again sits on top of crystal entity layer and is for very specif specific type of games. You will not use this for example for a game like Plane Shift say. But more for, for example, I was to create this I was inspired by Fallout, which is a, a game set in a, a big world where you can walk around in all directions for a long time. And this is also something that I would like to achieve with this. I'm looking for people who want to help me with this project. Uh, both coding sites, there's still a lot that has to be done with regards to code, but also also for uh, graphics and artwork so that we can make a world editor and also a game out of this. Thanks for watching.